Hi, I'm Liz Cully, and welcome back to Cool, Cool, Cool. Each week, I give you a glimpse into what I think is cool and chat with a ton of people that are definitely cool. No topic is off bounds unless, I guess, it's not cool. Welcome to Cool, Cool, Cool. I'd like to start this podcast with gratitude that you have obliged and entertained every one of my (laughs) antics over the last 12 years. Has it been that long? Yep. Wow. And you know what's crazy is I was like going through my closet the other day, you know, trying to donate stuff and give stuff away. And the sweatshirt that I will never forget, I did. I barely had enough money to buy it to wear on my first ever episode of Getting Nailed, which you were on. Uh I still have. Yeah. And then I was like, should I wear this? And then I looked at it and I'm like, why did I spend $300 at Kitson? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we all did it back you then. You know, mm-hmm. but you've been on everything. So I just wanted to say thank you. Oh, I'm always happy to be here. You're such a great interviewer. You're so, so kind. You're so mm-hmm. kind, especially because you are muy famosa. And uh, I'm going to try to rattle it off. I was like looking the other day, going through everything. And it's very funny because anytime a very pop, like popular, catchy earworm song. My wife always is like, I bet Bonnie wrote this. <laughs> and That's Rachel, good to hear. <laughs> Rachel's always like, is this is Bonnie McKee. And then I'll be like, yeah, everything is Bonnie McKee. Um, for those, like, we'll just set the stage because there's so many things I want to talk about how you just re-recorded your album that was supposed to come out long ago, a la, you know, Taylor Swift, but really just should have happened so long ago. The bajazillion sinks, bombastic American girl. We will get to all of that. But (laughs) the foundation of when you came to LA, started working on your own music, but then writing with some massive people. Mm -hmm. I just want people to understand that their teenage years, their 20s, that's really my demographic. Mm -hmm. Gen Z doesn't really follow me, but that's fine. (laughs) Last Friday night, California Girls, Tyra Cruz Dynamite, which whatever happened to that guy. Uh, <laughs> hold it against me, Britney Spears. I'm going to forget so many. Kesha, like Cher, Adam Lambert. I mean, really, truly, you are the artist of the artists, the artist of the gays, which, by the way, I had COVID for WeHo Pride and I was only going to go to see you. Oh, like for the girlies. I mean, it's pretty bananas. You are going to go down as like Leonard Cohen of oh. the 2000s. <laughs> I don't know about that. You're very kind, though. That's very sweet. But it's true. Well, I mean, I came up with the best, you know, I was like my mentor was Max Martin. So like hard to go wrong there. And I, by the way, had a lot to learn when I met him and I I learned so much from him and I'm really, really grateful for that. But none of these hits that I wrote were written just by me sitting at a piano. Like it takes a village to write a pop song. So I certainly cannot take all the credit for these songs. I've also seen you play at a piano, which we're going to get to (laughs) in another moment where I'm like, where is the stripped down ballad Bonnie McKee album? Well, funny you should say that because I'm (gasps) actually just about to go into, I mean, I'm not doing a whole album of it, but I'm going to be doing acoustic versions of the singles that I put out. Yeah, because, you know, like these days, I guess you put out a little EP for each single and then it like drives streams or whatever. And it's fun because I get to kind of do different versions. Like I just put out a remix of American Girl that was actually made 10 years ago, but never officially came out. And I'm going to do an acoustic version of Forever 21 and, you know, just like giving, giving the fans a little something to chew on. I would just like to say right now, Drop what you're doing. Pause this podcast. <laughs> go on to whatever streamer, Spotify, Apple. I do not care. I would like you to go and I would like you to go to a song called Easy by Bonnie McKee. <laughs> and I want you to not create a music video montage in your mind. I allegedly, when it first came out, was I think I actually texted you somewhat drunk, which I'm a little bit embarrassed of. <laughs> but I was walking in Times Square listening to easy, a little drunk, which I obviously don't do anymore because I'm an adult now, <laughs> sobbing oh. with the lights being oh. like, oh. Dun, 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 oh my God. It. <laughs> it is, that song is the shit. Thank you. We must make that go viral right now. I love that song so Thank much. you so You're much. You're welcome. It's so good. Thank you. It almost didn't make it on that EP. It was Where like was a it last minute. Go? It was a last minute edition. I wrote, I was like, I mean, it's cool, but like, I don't know. And then some like two of my friends were like, I really like this one. I was like, "Okay, fine. And then I put it on and now it's like a fan favorite. So I could cry right now. You never know. I love it so much. Thank you. It's so good. And that's (laughs) what I think. Listen, I know you go in and you do these writers camps 
and or whatever people do them. And you go in, you have all these different collaborators. But what's been cool about TikTok for you or for me as a fan and for everybody else getting to know you via TikTok is you've shown like this lyric almost made it or like this is how we came up with this for Roar or, Mm -hmm. you know, just to like name drop, talk about name dropper (laughs) episode, Bonnie McKee. (laughs) But or this is how, you know, last Friday night or whatever it came you wide awake, which mm-hmm. is such a beautiful song. Thank like, you. you're welcome. But I love that you show how you workshop different lyrics. Has that been so fun being able to now share all these different processes? And yeah, it's funny. Like, I, I actually found the original lyric for Wide Awake years ago and it was before TikTok. And I just put it on like my Instagram story and it kind of went nuts. And I was like, huh. People are actually interested in this. And then when I got on TikTok, because everyone was like, you got to get on TikTok. And I was like, what do I do? Like, it was before I was promoting music or whatever. And I was like, I mean, I guess like people are interested in that. But I hadn't really seen anybody using notebooks. Like every time I walk into a songwriting session, people are like, what is this analog bullshit? And I'm like, I have to write in a notebook. That's just how that's my process. But where do people I'm so sorry. I'm very They use like Google Docs or notes or what they type. No, that's not real. I I mean, I don't know. I can't I can't (laughs) help it. Like, that's just. When I write on a computer, then I tend to delete things because oh. I'm just it's like a weird OCD thing. But when I write in pen, it's not going anywhere. So all of the shitty ideas stay like I have a whole vault of it, you know, um, and it's fun to look back. And it's kind of like following a roadmap to seeing how we arrived at the gold, you know? Yeah, it's just been great. I think also for someone like me who would go to Amoeba in San Francisco every Tuesday <laughs> With my money to like buy a whole new album, I would open it up, put it in my disc man and immediately read who wrote what, what flute player is like on this rap Mm -hmm. album. I was so (laughs) into that. Mm -hmm. And I always could imagine like if I would see different musicians on different albums, I'm like, oh, my God, they must be friends. And I think (laughs) that story element, Mm -hmm. because we don't have that much tactile like albums anymore, like a Mm -hmm. lot you lose that. You know, you don't really look through the credits like you used to. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's probably why that video you posted on Instagram people were so into. Mm -hmm. Because I think people want to know who their favorite artists are coming up with these iconic songs. Yeah. I mean, I feel like for a long time, uh, the songwriters and even the producers were like so far behind the scenes and everyone just kind of assumed that like Britney Spears wrote all of her own songs or Whitney Houston, not even. Like some of the most iconic singers in history that we all love and respect, didn't write their own songs and nobody cares. doesn't matter. No. But now it's like, oh, if you don't write your own songs and like you're not a real artist, that's not the case. There are some people who are just incredible performers and writing is not their forte and that's okay. And as songwriters, we appreciate that. We're like, great. I have a song that, you know, is finished. You want it? Like, here you go. You can bring it to life. But I think that these days people are more interested in taking a peek behind the curtain and I feel like songwriters and the creators behind the songs are getting a little more shine. I was thinking about this whilst driving through the mountains of Malibu singing easy at the top of my lungs (laughs) on a Tuesday evening. (laughs) If you have a song, like you have all these amazing songs that are Bonnie McKee songs. You mentioned American Girl. That's a motherfucking summer iconic <laughs> classico. I remember when it came out. 2013, you were just on Getting Nailed. It was everywhere. Bombastic is synced with Mother. Wasn't it the like anthem of women's sports? I feel like every women's sports game I've ever been to, they're bombastic. I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, <laughs> Bonnie. You know what I mean? Being like, I know her. She's in my phone. We could text her right now. But <laughs> the sinks are just bananas. And so you've kept, it's like children, I would assume, or animal babies. But you're like, you have so much creativity. You're coming up with all these different songs. The ones that you've held on to your, for your own artistry, because you can sing like a motherfucker and play the piano. And I've seen <laughs> yeah. it all in my personal eyes. <laughs> But like easy. Thank God you didn't give that to anybody else. You know what I mean? But how do you if you have a song and you're like, you know what? This one, I could take it or leave it. Mm -hmm. Do you ever have a specific artist in mind for a song that maybe you're like, "Eh, I'm going to leave. I'm going to gift this to someone else. I mean, I think I usually will go in writing with a specific artist in mind. Okay, because like if certain artists will have a certain range or a point of view. And so like, we'll get a brief, like our publishers or the labels will be like, here's who's looking and they'll give us like a little brief, whatever. And then we'll write a song based on that. But 
in my personal career, I've been lucky enough to have written with a lot of artists who are also songwriters. Katy Perry is a great songwriter. Kesha is a great songwriter. So I get to go in with the actual artists themselves and sort of just help them bring their vision to life. Got it. So it's it's rare that I have a song sitting around that was kind of written for no one that gets cut. So those are usually the ones that I'm like, I mean, I usually write stuff for myself. I try to write songs that I would want to sing. You know, yeah, they're all great. Like if I wouldn't want to sing it, then like it's probably not getting cut, you know, but it, it does occasionally. It does occasionally. And I'm always like, huh, you want that one? OK, sure. I mean, one of the biggest songs ever is Dynamite. How did you come up with Dynamite? Dynamite was a full collaboration. Okay. Um, that was a song that was started by Max Martin and Dr. Luke, and they had a melody and they handed it to me. I wrote the lyric on the hook, which everyone thinks is a party song, but it's not. Oh, I love everyone, when Bonnie McKee comes on my shows. I get all the tea. Ooh, mm. Everyone always asks me, like, why do you only throw your hands up in the air sometimes? Like, I throw my hands up in the air sometimes. And they're like, why is it sometimes? Yeah, why And the is reason it? is because it was actually written when I was getting sober and it's about surrender. It's about like, sometimes you just got to throw your hands up and say, hey, yo, got to let go, right? Like, it's about like handing it over to the universe. And then Tayo came in and he wrote the verses. <laughs> so Next time yeah. you hear that in the club, you better hold up your sparkling water, motherfuckers. I mean, I like to believe that <laughs> some of that heart and soul that I put into it, or like at least being rooted in a place that was like semi-spiritual, kind of shines through. Because I really felt like the melody that was there was felt inspiring and spiritual even yeah. though it was a party song and so i like to think that that is partly why it works so well is that people can hear that people can feel it you know yeah it's definitely anthemy mm -hmm. which i think is really hard to do like mm -hmm. how do you create songs that last and that's what i really mean about the sinks is it's like that's really hard to do get songs that are so appreciated on a mass scale like that you can have a hit on the radio whatever but to be played in arenas mm -hmm. to support sports or whatever it might be mm -hmm. that's like fucking huge that's like a that's inspirational music thank you you're welcome i mean i feel like when i write i do try to think of like like it's not super niche like it's very personal to me but i always try to make a point to write songs that can appeal to the most amount of people possible so i can like have a root of a heart and soul and a personal story, but tell it in a way that's unique, but also universal. You know, yeah. it's like I want your grandma to like it and I want your two year old to like it, too. Like I want everyone to enjoy it. I just want to, like, bring as many people joy as possible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I just think it's so incredibly difficult to achieve that. I think there is this misconception and I, I believe this is actually changing, but I think there has been a misconception that pop music is fluffy and fun. I think it's the hardest. I can't imagine. It is. And like I said in Earworm, I was talking to Kenna. Mm -hmm. Remember Kenna? Mm -hmm, yeah. Oh, shout out to Kenna. <laughs> and we were actually talking about the Justin Timberlake Selfish song. And I was like, okay, I have to tell you something. I like low-key love that song. And he's <laughs> like, yeah, because it's a fucking earworm. Yeah. Because you, and I was like, I learned every lyric, even at my old age which it's like harder for me to like learn lyric songs <laughs> on the radio now i don't know why but i learned the song in like a day or two mm -hmm. and that is very difficult to accomplish it is it is really hard and it, yeah i think people do underestimate the difficulty of writing the simplest thing um because it has to be simple it has to make sense it has to appeal to people that don't speak english if you're going for like a proper global hit oh. um it has to phonetically feel right and you have to say something different you have to say the same thing in a different way. So it's mm -hmm. and also has to all fit within three and a half minutes, although it's even gotten shorter. I was, these days. That was one of my questions today yeah. for you. Um, what the fuck is going on here? Why are songs a minute and a half long? Two minutes max. I don't think that's going to last. I think that people had a minute where they were like, oh, like everyone's attention span is so short and like TikTok and blah, blah, blah. I put out a song kind of just as an in between goal. <laughs> When I put out Don't Get Mad, Get Famous, and the original demo was never finished. Get famous. Right. <laughs> and so when it came, it was like 120 seconds or something. Um, and people were livid. The fans were so mad. And I was like, why is everybody? One of the comments that I got that I was like, oh, damn, that makes sense. I was like, why are you all so mad about this? And someone was like, I am a drag performer. And like, if it's short, I'm making less money. And I was like, oh, shit. OK, that totally checks out. OK. 
So I did an extended version um, with a young artist named Sophie Powers, who I'm a really big fan of. Um, she's been really fun to work with. I did a longer version and it's still kind of short, but that was just a weirdo song. But I think that people are mad when songs don't have bridges or at least it's I not am. like long enough to like get like once you get into the flow, it's over. And so like you want to give people a bang for their buck, you know, not that anybody's paying for music anymore, but you know what I mean? <laughs> Fair enough. I just I was <laughs> listening to a new YG song. He's a rapper. And <laughs> I was pissed. I'm like, oh, wait. So I now have to turn this back on again. And I looked. I just was curious. It was a minute and 13 seconds. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I was like, I am. Well, it's also like, that's the thing is that like we get paid so little per I stream know. that it's like we want you to listen to it over and over and over again, you know? Because so if you have a five minute song, it's like once you've heard it for five minutes, you're kind of like on to the next one. And I know I'm guilty of this myself. Like I tend to skip around. Like I make it through the second chorus and I'm like, okay, on to the next. But it's like if you're really a fan of something, you want to hear the full thought. Like it feels kind of unfinished if there's not. Yeah. I mean, not necessarily that you need a bridge, but just like, I don't know. I think we're all just so it's been so ingrained in us that a pop song is like three and a half to four minutes long. You know, I need three minutes. Mm -hmm. I need some time with it just to see. I always get excited with the build, you know, Mm -hmm. but I can. I just was so curious about that. And I knew you'd be the perfect person to ask. because I'm like, (laughs) what the fuck? This is like getting shorter and shorter. Mumble rap. Feel free to be 60 seconds long. <laughs> Could care less. You know yeah. what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you do you in these streets. Mm-hmm. What was it like re-recording this record for you? Like how, Hot City, you are truly the definition and personification of Hot City. Oh, thank you very much. You're so welcome. We thank haven't you. even started talking about how Bonnie McKee is not only songstress, musician, singer, fashion maven, but also (laughs) legitimately the party queen of Los Angeles, which we will get into. Thank you. But you're welcome. (laughs) But what did it feel like re-recording? Well, I didn't know for sure that I could. I was like nervous because there was a couple of samples in some of them that I like couldn't recreate. And I was like, I don't even know if the label's going to like send me a cease and desist. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. But I it was really exciting to feel like these songs that I had grieved I really was so devastated that the album didn't come out the first time because I felt like it was some of my best songs. Uh, You know, that was like the peak of my songwriting shit. Like I was on my game. That was my A game. Yeah. And I was like, I can't believe that nobody gets this. But it was like at the time, like Slay was supposed to be the second single. And then um, Lord came out and Royals was a huge hit. And then the label was like, nobody wants Slay anymore. Nobody wants like a big sparkly, like traditional pop anthem. Like you got to be weird. You got to be minimalist. And like, don't get me wrong. I love Royals. I think that's a fantastic song. Although bitch did steal my Grammy, but it's fine. Stole it. I also am going to just interject my own personal opinion right now. You know, what's funny. I saw a TikTok and it was, or no, I saw a TikTok about the poor girl that just sang the Amer- the oh, Star Spangled uh-huh. Banner, yeah. allegedly drunk. Mm-hmm. Bless your heart. Whatever. But she's like, oh, sick. Why does everyone sing like that? I don't know. For me, I would like a sparkly pop album or song. I don't know. For me, the minimal stuff is difficult for me. It's like mumble. It's like the equivalent of mumble rap. I mean, I loved Lord when she came out. I still love Lord. Sure. I think she's incredible. I love Billie Eilish. I like lunch. Like some of it I love more than others. Bad guy. Bad guy was. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. Bad guy was fucking fantastic. Fine. Um, Fine. And, sure. you know, and also like it's just a new generation. Like that's part of getting older is that it's like, OK, like the thing that was popular when I was coming of age is no more. That's and so weird because you are Benjamin Button. So <laughs> that's very strange. That's a very weird comment coming from you. But yeah, well, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's like pop music goes in cycles. And that's what I was told. I remember Max Martin telling me that. And I was like, oh, so like when the sparkly you know, golden era of pop stuff from the 20 in the 2010s, early 2010s kind of had its moment. Everyone gets burnt out on it. You start getting a lot of copycats. Everything starts to sound the same. And then something fresh needs to break through like Lord. And that's exactly what she did. And then, you know, there were several other artists who followed in in her path. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to sit this out. It'll come back. It will come back. And sure enough, here we are back in sparkle dance mode. And I'm so happy. I could not be happier. Like it has been years since there have been new artists where I've been like, fuck, yeah, I want to hear that again. What? Tell us some. Um, I love Chapel Roan. I I love Sabrina Carpenter. Me too. I feel like Ariana Grande has been slaying it all along. And 
I don't know. There's just there's a lot more kind of dance influence stuff. And but like I think Sabrina Carpenter and Chaperone are like really exciting traditional pop that's yeah. still original. It's still fresh. Yeah. It's not like a rehash of something that's already happened. It's like they've got their own style and flavor. And I love that they're bringing back the theatrics because that's the thing I was missing the most. Me too. Like, look, I have so many Gen Z friends and I love them. And honestly, I think they're going to save the world. It's great. But like when it comes to like just the style of some of some of these artists over the past 10 years, I'm just like the theatrics are gone. And like even just the kids on the Internet, it's like everyone's in a sweatsuit with a full beat on their face. You know what I mean? Like and I'm like, what happened to silhouettes? What happened to color? What happened? Everyone's in a beige fucking athleisure. I'm like, yeah. I'm so bored. Yeah. Like, I want a feast for the eyes. Like, give me a look, you know? Yeah, Serve me a look, bitch. No one serves <laughs> looks like you, Bonnie. <laughs> well, uh. I've just, like, stayed exactly the same. Like, yeah, you were talking thank about, God. <laughs> you were talking about having that sweatshirt that you got at yeah. Kids Center or whatever. <laughs> like, I still wear shit that I've had for since high school. I okay. still have it. <laughs> I mean, same. I also, um, you had a, like, a yard sale in Los no, in Silver, in Silver Lake. Yeah, I have a pair of your Louboutins that I wear all the time. I almost wore them today, and then I asked Rachel if that would be weird, and she was like, "That would be kind of weird." Wait, which ones are they? They're not platform, which is crazy for uh-huh. Bonnie McKee. That's probably why I sold them. Yeah. Yep. But they're almost graffiti looking. They're black with yellow oh, and white yeah. paint splatters. Yes, yes, I remember those. Anyway, I wear them all the time. Oh my god, I love that. Yeah, uh, we're the same shoe size. So next time you do that, can you call me first? Well, I'll just I will come be over. having. I will be having another garage sale very soon. But can I just come over first? Yeah, you can Thank have first you. dibs. Yeah, I would just like the first <laughs> dibs, please. But yeah, I think you're right. It's that. So you re-recording, I guess some semantic questions are you mentioned the um, some of the samples. But is it that and I think some folks don't under, even understand kind of like what Taylor Swift did. But is mm-hmm. it they owned the masters? Yes. And therefore, if you re-record a song just to like really break this down for mm-hmm. the for the girls here. If you have a song that is recorded and just think of it as like an MP3 on your computer, mm-hmm. they own that MP3. They own that master recording that happened in the studio. Correct. But you could go into the same studio and press record on a different computer. We'll just say different computer to really differentiate. Mm-hmm. That is a new master and therefore you own that master. But can it be the exact same song? No, no. Oh. Which is why I had to re-record it. Like so, and change it up a little. Well, I mean, I can I can in the same way that Taylor did. I mean, like I haven't a beat them. <laughs> I don't know what the difference between Taylor's version and the original versions are. Some Swifties say they hear the difference. I I haven't tried it out. But anyway, they paid for the studio at the time. Yeah. They paid for the studio. They paid the producer. They paid yep. for whatever the marketing, whatever that never happened for these songs, so, which is why I was like, we didn't even pay for anything. I did it all in my own fucking studio, whatever. So any note that is played or recorded, they own because they paid for it. So I had to start from scratch. And there were a couple of songs that I was like, there's just some shit that I can't recreate. So I went back to Sony and was like, can I just like, license this like like a percentage so on a couple of the songs sony's getting a small percentage and i'm like great and i was just so grateful that they were willing to play ball with me because it was none of the same people at the label like no they're like who the fuck are you like we don't even have these masters on file (laughs) but when you say like there's something you couldn't create it's a sound that Mm -hmm. was recorded back then that you then wanted to take that sound i know i'm getting really like nerdily but i just am (laughs) so curious because it's so amazing that you've done it because Thank it you. was so great. And like, I remember <laughs> all of us were like, what the fuck? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And it sucks that like, and I think that's what's great about the internet, YouTube, all of these different avenues, while they are tough because there's less control, mm-hmm. they at least give you the opportunity to get the content out because people want to, they, yes. they got to want to consume it, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. which is really awesome. Yeah. And we're not slaves to traditional radio anymore. Yes. I mean, yeah. Now, unfortunately, you guys are slaves to fucking the streamers, which. Yeah. I'm which sorry. is also like, yeah, it's it's hard out here. It's hard out here. Did for you an, hear for about the bitch. Sabrina Carpenter espresso conspiracy? No. I'm surprised that you haven't because uh, there's <laughs> I this, love a pop conspiracy. Uh, right. <laughs> I was listening to this on NPR because <laughs> I'm 100 and. Going over Barham because I just li- Barham 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 Barham. Mm, mm-hmm. That's like Wilshire. I say Wilshire <laughs> wrong. Don't worry about it. Like Worcestershire um, sauce. Worcestershire. <laughs> but 
there was some fans on TikTok that said that no matter if they did their new release Friday or if they were playing their own music on, this is for Spotify specifically, Mm -hmm. that no matter what, Espresso would come on. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I didn't ask for this. My algorithm wouldn't have suggested this. I'm like listening to like Chicano, like, rock and roll you know what i mean right. whatever something so left field and so there was this conspiracy that the label had somehow made a deal with spotify to get espresso everywhere huh yeah i, I imagine that costs a lot of money like a fuck ton of money um i mean there are features in spotify where you can have i think it's called marquee or something where like you can have it pop up or whatever I thought that that was just for like people that had maybe listened to your prior stuff or listened to similar artists. So that wouldn't surprise me if it would pop up for someone that had maybe listened to, you know, Dua Lipa or anyone that's in the same genre. Um, But no, I haven't heard that. That's very interesting, though. That is very interesting. And then apparently as an artist, you can get yourself like featured or pushed, but then you have to give some of those listen that some Mm -hmm. money back to Spotify. Yeah. You always got to pay the piper. Dude, that's so annoying. Anyway, yeah, let, look, just, it's crazy. And like, I just did a really cool collaboration with Spotify and they've been nice to me. Um, but everybody's mad okay, at Spotify. We love Spotify. <laughs> no, everybody's mad at Spotify. And understandably, especially the songwriters, the songwriters really yep. get fucked. Um, but nobody's yelling at the labels and like the labels are just as fucked. Um, Big time and always have been. And yeah. And so I feel like it's kind of like, oh, oh, I don't know. I just think we need to put more pressure on the labels to pay the songwriters. Like that's what needs to happen. Because producers get paid, like producers get a fee, they get a piece of the publishing, they get points on the master, like producers get like three times more money than just a songwriter. And that's really? insane. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I believe that a lot of that has to do with the fact that most producers are traditionally men. And we're seeing more female producers now, which is so incredible. And I'm so happy to see that. But I think it absolutely has something to do with that. <laughs> Misogyny is the worst. You, what's been also great about the fact that you re-recorded the album, you are now back to bestowing incredible content (laughs) for all of us. And the thing about you is even back then, your music videos, you talk about turning look, you talk about aesthetic, you talk about sparkle. You are so creative beyond (laughs) writing songs. No, I'm, Bonnie, I've known you a long ass time, but I'm being (laughs) really honest here. Like, even the original videos, f- Slay with the leather jackets and like giving us Michael Jackson thriller, like mm. you oh, have Sleepwalker. Yeah. Sleepwalker, sorry. Mm-hmm. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> but you know, but like all of these incredible videos that you've put so much of your own resources in, hair, makeup, you also, just if everyone didn't know and was wondering, you've also worked with the most legit hair and makeup people yes. before anyone else. And I really just want to call that out. <laughs> Thank you very You're much. You're so welcome, Bonnie, because you, you know what? We are no gatekeepers here on this show. We we really give everyone their flowers. <laughs> that is why you were on Getting Nailed originally. You were with Nail Swag. I don't know if you, st- is she still yeah, around? Yeah. Great. Mm-hmm. Tell Natalie I said hi. I will. You, Aaron Light did your hair. I just saw his cousin. Oh, yeah. Stefan. I yes. Know, oh, so my great. God. <laughs> I, like the makeup artists beyond now. Anthony Nguyen. Sorry. Anthony yes. Nguyen, who <laughs> has been in Vegas doing Adele's makeup. Guys, Bonnie McKee, you really have always slayed. Thank you very much. You are so welcome. Really from the fucking jump beginning. So I just want to give you the credit that you deserve right Thank there. You. Well, you I mean, welcome. like, you know, I just was lucky to work with super talented people that believed in me. Because, you know, I wasn't I know. a big star and like they were, you know, making their way up, up the ladder, you know, and I'm happy to have been one of the stepping stones along the way. Yes. And I just really, I really, I wasn't even planning on bringing that up, but here we are. But you, but that actually leads me to exactly what I'm talking about. It costs so much money to do hair and makeup. We've mm-hmm. talked about this on the show a million times. You hired so many people to be in your, con- you've just created what I grew up on, which is top notch music videos. It's why I would race home to watch MTV and VH1. <laughs> same, same. But truly, and I think what's been really, really fun, and I know I wrote you the other day, but it's been so much fun to see this album come out because we're getting so much fun Bonnie McKee content. Thank you. Thank you. You are welcome. I mean, look, people are like, oh, like, how did you get into music? And I'm like, I I was raised by a television, you know, American Girl, if you know, you know. 
Um, if you know, I was you raised know. watching TRL and VH1 and, uh, you know, music videos. And that was what excited me most. Like, I didn't really buy albums as a child. And like, not until like middle school was I actually like, okay, I'm going to go get the No Doubt album or whatever. But I was watching the videos and I remember watching Madonna videos or Michael Jackson videos or whatever it was and being like, I want to do that. Like, I want to wear the costumes. I want to dance. I want to tell a story. And I would like have all these fantasies about what I would do. And so, you know, I'm I'm lucky to say I'm one of those people that did what I said I was going to do when I grew up. I love making music videos. It's not what it used to be, obviously. Um, I mean, I still think it's a very important art form that people have like kind of abandoned a little bit. And it's like stupid. There's no return on investment. It's just really (laughs) because I love it. I do it because I love it. And I think that, you know, it's just part of my my catalog now where I can like look back and be like, look at all this cool shit I did, you know, so much cool shit, though. Thank you. I mean, the photo shoots, the (laughs) that's what I mean. I mean, you really are so creative. You are also, as I said earlier, the queen of partying, but really the queen of Halloween. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Bonnie, like the, (laughs) the fucking Halloween costumes are out of control. The My Little Pony. You oh should start throwing up this content. <gasps> oh my god. Honestly, give this to the TikTok kids. Oh they my god. need to know. The My Little Pony was banana It cans. was so scary. It was It was terrible. It was I was so <laughs> Okay, I painted my whole body lavender because I was like I want to be a lavender pony, okay? I looks like, good with red hair. I mean, thank you. I built a whole like rainbow tail blah 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 and then I did the thing like before people were doing like crazy makeup. I did the thing where I painted like cartoon eyes over my own eyes. So it was when, Trixie Mattel. It was giving Trixie Mattel. Right. But when I would take the picture, I would close my eyes and then it would look like I had cartoon, like full cartoon eyes. But what I didn't realize was when I painted myself with this lavender paint, it like has a lot of white in it. And so my teeth looked absolutely butter yellow. Look this color. <laughs> you know, like if you've ever like painted your face white for a vampire thing or whatever, like your teeth will look yellow next to like stark white. And I was like, wow, I am like the scariest pony that ever trotted through Hollywood. But then you were, and this was actually my one and only, Rachel and I really crushed it. Do you remember when we showed up to your house as Priscilla and Elvis? Yes. Uh, That actually was was so good. And I got my makeup. I mean, I really, I have to say that was the best, but we show up and this one over here is a fucking centaur or a centaur. Mm -hmm. That, she's got the whole butt with the legs dangling. That's when I met Marnie the dog, R.I.P. Uh, I know, R.I.P. R.I.P. <laughs> I hope your, your friend's well. That yes. was so, I, we're all sitting there like, oh my God. And I just kept like holding this dog who just had its tongue out. <laughs> then we have the Sharon Tate. Oh yeah, that was controversial. It was, but it was so good. It doesn't Thank really you. matter. I just really, like I, I literally said a little prayer before I put on the costume. It was like, I'm, I'm here to honor you. I love you. May you rest in peace. Like yeah. I'm not, you know. But I, I did pretty, like I feel I felt a little some kind of way about it after the fact. I was like, Ew. fine, fair enough. My last Bonnie McKee Halloween party, Rachel and I dressed up as Paul Hollywood and Prue from the Great British Baking Show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, uh, we had just been married literally a week before we show up. Not a single one of these very, very cool, Los Feliz Silver Lake Highland Park young, artistic, Gen Z knew who the fuck we were. Everyone <laughs> kept being like, why are there these weird old people? And Rachel kept going to like shake everyone's hand. <laughs> I was in your kitchen talking to Simon Rex, uh-huh. who's the best, who I had just seen like a month before. And he's like, hey, I'm like, hey, Simon Rex, like it's Liz Cully, where I literally look like a little grandma in a... <laughs> In a sweater in your in your kitchen, you, that's when you had the DeLorean and you were yeah. like, I was a Sariyama robot. You guys, it was just and you're just like walking around and I'm like, hey, Bonnie, like, great to see you. Like, you look great. You can't move. Like, I'm going to take a picture in front of this DeLorean. <laughs> I'm in the I'm in the kitchen kind of being like, hey, Simon, like, what's up? He's like, what are you dressed as? I'm like, <laughs> Prue from the Green British Breaking Show. And Rachel comes up and like give, tries to give him the like handshake. And Simon's like, this is not working. <laughs> then I see Ben Sheehan, who is now like political, like strategist, superstar. writer, superstar, who I've known for a bajillion years, walking up to me dressed as like, I think a 1920s burlesque dancer woman. Oh, they were uh, 
they were Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh, fine. Same mm-hmm. thing as yeah. if I know. <laughs> I walk up, I see him and I look at Rachel. I'm like, maybe we are not everyone. Do- what are you dressed at? And I was like, we're not cool enough to be at Bonnie McKee's Halloween party no, anymore. No, it was a theme. Did you miss that part? <laughs> oh, what was the theme? No, every year I do a theme. I never do the theme. I do a theme just to give people ideas and inspiration. Right, well, guess so what? that year it was sci-fi. Well, Bonnie. And that's why there's a DeLorean. <laughs> okay, well, I didn't do that because <laughs> that's I why people up. were probably trying to be like, what how does this relate to sci-fi? That's probably why it, people are like, I don't understand. Yeah, really but if it had been like, you know, TV stars, then it would be like, oh yeah, I know exactly who you are. I actually am gonna beg to differ. <laughs> I don't think anyone would know anything. I'm so um, sorry. It's totally fine. I appreciate the invite every year, but Aaron, who does both of our hair, yours is so much more interesting than mine. (laughs) Even though every time I do threaten, I'm like, I'm going to do the Bonnie McKee peach sherbet hair. Oh my God, do it. I'm scared. I mean, it's... But if it doesn't come back... If you just do like a red pastel, then it's just, it washes out and it's fine. And your hair looks the same again? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. One day I say it every time. I'm always like, mm, the Sherbert. Remember Bonnie <laughs> did the like pinky Sherbert. It was for actually American Girl. Yeah. And, you know, those were like, and then I went full pink for Bombastic. Which I love. I was full baby bubblegum pink. And it was like the Tumblr days. And like that was all the rage. And then I was just blonde for a while. And I I just like don't do well as a blonde. I mean, it was a very hard time of my life. It was the, probably the darkest years of my yeah. life. And I was like, who am I? I feel invisible. I look in the mirror. I don't recognize myself. And then I randomly ran into Lana Del Rey at a party. And she was like, knew who I was. First of all, I was shook. She was like, look what I was listening to on my way here. Pulls up bombastic. I was like, what is happening right now? And she was like, we should talk. And I was like, okay. She called me and gave me like an hour long pep talk about my whole career and what I need to do and all this shit. Because I was like very lost. And I think she could see that. And she was like, you got to be a redhead again. What are you doing? And I was like, yes, ma'am. Yes, Lana. Did she speak to you in that like buttery, buttery voice? Yeah. Yeah. She's buttery. Is it like, oh, bunny, you have to be redhead. <laughs> Go back. Wait, what? Is- <laughs> no, she was very sweet. She was very sweet. And it was just like, uh, she just kind of dropped out of the sky right when I needed to hear that she and I was like getting out of an abusive relationship and she just like I just really needed that yeah well and you are a redhead I I am I just am a redhead you at got heart. to stay with the yeah, we, I didn't, I, behind your back every time I get my hair done I'm like oh my god how's Bonnie Bonnie's great I just saw Bonnie <laughs> I just went to her house it took up a gazillion hours to do her hair I'm like oh my god <laughs> but her color is so great and we're all like we know <laughs> so I think you like have to stay with the red. Well, it's funny because now there are other redheads coming up, like the Chapel Rones. And I now I'm getting like, oh, okay, you're like a dollar store Chapel Rone. I'm like, what? I'm sorry. Like, I love Chapel. And so like, I'm and I'm grateful for the comparison. But like, I've literally been doing this since she was like in elementary school, like literally. Not to say that I invented red hair, but I'm like, let's do a I red ambition tour. Pop I want to do a red ambition tour. Let's go, Chapel. Like, Ooh. Redheads Unite. Okay. Did you go to the Madonna tour? I did. Yeah, me too. I flew to Sacramento. No Did way. you see me dress up, though? No. Wait. You ha- You didn't see my cousin, who's like also the queen of Halloween? No. You're going to die. You actually... This is very... I should have been like, Bonnie, look what I did for you. I'm sorry. I've never done this. <laughs> Maybe I'll do this Um, for your Halloween party. Yes. So we flew to Sacramento because I bought tickets. It was my cousin's 40th birthday. I bought tickets for San Francisco, but she kept canceling the show. And it wasn't like they were moving my tickets. They just kept refunding me over and over. Right. And then so when, you'd have to get them all over again. And they'd be twice the price. Right. So I was like, you know what? Let's go to Sacramento. Sacktown, Baria, back down. <laughs> You can skip Sacramento. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, the human nature whipping Dude, the dog. I love human nature. I feel like that was such an underrated song. Big time. That was like one of my favorites growing up. Oh she my stole God. this idea for me, but it was her birthday. So I, I let her. And then I it. obviously did nothing. Even nothing really matters. Oh, my God. Incredible. Do you I die that we did this? Though? You killed it. I also, you. I also dressed up for the Madonna show. I did um, the purple outfit, the dance Every little thing that you say, I'm hung up. Oh, you yeah, were a leotard. Up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of course. As you have. Because I was like, what do I have? And I was like, yeah, I have you, plenty of leotards. You definitely. And she was also a redhead for that era. Oh, yeah, she mm-hmm. was. Yeah. A very Marty McGee red. Mm-hmm. 
So the career is careering. Mm -hmm. You've just it's like I'm so glad pop music. You're right. And I'm very excited. I really like the new Tovlo. Oh my God, me too. Like I love Tov. Me too. I'm like, she's real fun. Wanna hang out? I actually saw her at a party in Malibu once and I was like, wanna be my friend? And then I didn't say anything. Right. But I <laughs> it's S. G. Lewis, isn't yeah. it? I Ooh. love it. Obsessed. So fun. It's I great. really like the Sophie Tucker song about slapping ass and doing I know. something. Yeah, 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 me too. I love Sophie Tucker too. Big like, time. I, when Best Friend came out, it was like on repeat. Yes. Like my whole summer. I love that song. What do you, I feel like like we went through the pandemic. We all almost died of an airborne disease that still doesn't feel real. I feel like this is when pop music is needed the most. Like this is your time. Yeah. Again. And you know, when the economy is shit, then people want happier music. When everything's great, like in the 90s, then people have time and patience to be more introspective, which is when like the nirvanas happen where it's like, oh, we can all be sad and like because we're comfortable. And so now we can like take a look at our feelings. But when the world is a shit show, people want to escape. Yeah. That and that's sense. when pop like comes back up, you know? I mean, I just personally like to listen to like rappers talking about drug dealing for the mm -hmm. most part. Mm -hmm. um, I was listening to MLK Boulevard uh, mm -hmm. by Jeezy. z whilst driving down Glendale Boulevard, very frustrated yesterday. Mm -hmm. Like, I still kind of, that's my go-to. Uh -huh. But then I want to pop on, like, Easy by Bunny McKee. Yes, I, le so I love good. your playlist. This um, is great. Thank you so much. <laughs> and, like, the new Tovlo and, and what have you. Mm -hmm. So you teased that you are going to be recording some of these songs acoustically or mm -hmm. stripped down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're focused on now? I mean, you're writing all the time. So are you now going to be writing something else or are you uh, tired or are you tired uh, I'm, well i started a whole other album right before the pandemic and i was like shopping that around but i had been like kind of dormant for a minute and so everybody passed and i was like uh i'm then i'm just gonna do it on my own here i go and then the pandemic hit and i was like mm, not the time mm. because it's like it's a pretty dark album and once again i was like people don't want to hear this right now people need something yeah. more uplifting and like also i just need to also look at my own life and be like who the hell am i like we all did you need a pep talk from lana del rey yeah exactly um so i have a whole album almost finished i'd say i'm about you know two-thirds of the way there i still have a few songs i want to write for it it's different it's still bops it's still pop it's still traditional pop and songwritery but it's like very raw very raw very like content wise emotionally raw i would say easy is raw it is yeah it's a rare raw one for me although here's the thing like all of these songs Ugh, like my favorite kind it. of song is like something that's real and like kind of dark and deep but it's wrapped in a sparkly pop package yeah, you're like getting sober like di baby firework yeah. diamond dynamite yes, or whatever exactly <laughs> and same thing with forever 21 which is the single that we're pushing now i just uh, did you see that music video yet uh excuse me i believe I oh, yes. commented and said, of course, all the girls are here. Um, Forever 21 is great. You should watch the music video. Eden, who's been a guest on the show, Molly, Tarlov. I mean, every like all your homies are in it who I know and I love. And I also love that you always do that. It yeah. is the cutest music video. I mean, I know it's about I think from what I watched on your TikTok, you about getting sober. Mm -hmm. So deep, mm -hmm. but it's a very cute video. Yeah. Yeah. Thank it's you. super cute. Um, so, yeah, so this new album that will, I mean, that's a ways away still. Like, okay. I'm going to be, like, the Chapel Rowan album that is now in the top 10 came out a year ago. Like, in order to make this shit happen without a label, I mean, she had a label even. But, like, yeah, I, I got to keep pushing it. Like We're pushing. So just reaching the people that already are there to follow me on my socials, like, just getting to them takes so many fucking posts. It's insane. Like, the algorithm will not let me reach my audience that is there. They, they signed up for it and they won't show it to them. So That's I'm like, so strange. Okay. I have the same thing. I mean, these poor listeners have heard it at nauseum. I go up and down. I'm shadow banned all the time. Yeah. People tell me they never see my content, which so sad. You don't see me gardening it with <laughs> ravioli and like <laughs> complaining about my life. I apologize, but people really don't. It's so strange. Yeah. It's like it really is a bummer. It's all a conspiracy. I hate it all. Um, um, but whatever. So I don't know if you have any experience with bots at all. Yeah. Okay. So I heard that Instagram has this new thing where it'll it can tell who you who the suspected bots are, and you can delete them all in one fell swoop. Which 
because I somewhere along the way, I hired someone that I think bought some bots without me know where they were like, yeah, we're going to grow your following. And then I was like, OK. And then nothing really happened. I think someone did that to me, too. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, cool. The number went up, but like it fucks up your whole engagement because there's a bunch of zombie accounts that but are not rid of those. You can do it now on Instagram. But how do you it's in the thing? It's in the thing. I don't know. So, this is where I sound so like I went, I went to look and I was like, oh, my God, there's a lot. And I'm like, OK, what is this really going to do? If I like delete all of these, it's scary to be like, I'm letting go of like a big number. Like my number is going to drop. But I'm like, but they're fucking useless. This is like and they're hurting fucking your shit. Up. Yeah, it's hurting my algorithm. So I think I might do a post about it and be like, OK, y'all, I'm doing it. I'm pushing the fucking button. Like, here we go. And I think it'll be good for everybody to be able to do that because, like, I think a lot of us are feeling frustrated with the algorithm. And I think that shit like that really hurts everybody. There are some accounts that are, like, all bots. Like, there are some people that I'm like, yeah, yeah because this, remember this when they match. get rid of all the bots and it's always like, Kim Kardashian lost a million followers. I'm like, OK. But it's you like, know? I never paid for bots. Like, I never did that. I think that, like, when you get to a certain amount of followers, like, they kind of just come. They because, come. you know, or they're, like, up in the comments or do whatever. I don't even know what the fuck they do. They're dancing around. I'm just like, who benefits from that? Like, who is doing this? Brands. I guess so. Yeah. Brands. Mm-hmm. It's all a racket. It's all kind of bullshittery. Yeah. Which is why I miss traditional television uh-huh. music videos. Me too. Me too. Well, you the know? other thing is, like, unfortunately, like, it's not just like, oh, I want to get likes and views, whatever. Like, getting that engagement is what leads to getting a tour, getting streams, know. selling merch. Like, those numbers matter. And I hate it. Like, I wish that there was a way around it. But like, unfortunately, in my genre anyway, like if I want to go on tour, I got to have the proof has got to be in the pudding through the where it's like if but I'm you not did going just viral, do a bunch of pride. Shows. I did. Yes. No, I'm. it's fine. It's fine. Also, but next it's like, time you have a, an event where all these drag queens dress up as Bonnie McKee, <laughs> I would like to be invited. Thank you very. I was like, this is well, the you most know genius fucking thing ever. The algorithm didn't show it to you. Because I posted about it. Oh, really? Yes. What the fuck? That's what I'm saying. Because that I would have gone to. I saw your video and I was like, this is so great. It was awesome. Like, and I've seen you perform live Jimmy Kimmel stage. Yeah. Oh, my God. Remember that? There. I was there. Yes. Oh, my God. What a time. What a time. Because <laughs> I used to do all that content at Jimmy Kimmel. I mean, but I really that looked so fun. I mean, and I unfortunately had COVID during I was so sick during oh, Pride, which was like fine. But I. It's so fun to see you doing all these shows because you do well, really have such a dedicated audience, Bonnie. I, I love my fans. I love my fans. They like, love you. Like, I feel like a lot of artists are kind of like, ooh, like, want to keep... Oh, my God. Like, and wait, remember at Pulse Studios, American Girl, you, when you did that whole show, remember? Which uh, Oh, remember in the, in the parking, parking lot? lot? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that was most... Well, there were some fans, but that was mostly like industry people. But I'm just saying it was fun to watch you perform i'm telling all the people to download oh, and thank you. do your thing because it is such a fun show thank you you're great you well, can dance I'm, I'm not it's not a show but i'm doing um i'm doing bingo at hamburger berries and i'm gonna do a couple songs at the end wait i love there's that. gonna be prizes this, this is gonna be fun i love that that's incredible <laughs> that's really amazing is there anyone you haven't that you can like tease that you might be working with or collaborating with soon um no okay no because even if I am writing an entire album with someone, there's absolutely no guarantee that that's coming out. So like you don't really oh, talk about right. it or announce it until it's like because it's like it's spooky. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Things God can definitely go that. sideways at the last minute and they do all the time. You don't want to jinx it. Exactly. That would be a good. Oh, that's what I wanted to ask you. Could we please as the bisexual girly pop girly, the original bisexual pop girly hey i invented bisexual pop what can i say literally invented bisexual (laughs) pop sat in bed with the iconic joan rivers and talked about her said bisexuality which is now in your wikipedia yeah which is fucking great i love reading everybody's wikipedia oh my god there's so many weird things on my wikipedia that a are just like false and like but i'm not allowed to edit it like you're not allowed to edit your own Wikipedia. You like you have to you have to go through a company and like have like pay someone to edit it for you. It's a whole fucking thing. But I'm like, okay, okay well, well, there's like details that I would like to be in my Wikipedia about my career that I have spoken about in interviews or on TikTok or whatever. And I'm like, does that not count as a source? Like, how do you source? Mm. I don't know how it works. Anyway, it's it's good that it's that way because like it keeps everybody honest and it's not just people like writing their own Wikipedia with a bunch of bullshit. 
But there's definitely some shit in there that I'm like, that is not real. I mean, right? I feel like Grace Colley was a, uh, well, actually, I was like an A minus B plus student. (laughs) <laughs> maybe actually I should just give the most real Wikipedia. <laughs> Liz is great. She's like now developed like maybe an allergy to cheese. She doesn't know. She keeps eating it. Um, but can you please write like a lesbian by se- I get Billie Eilish lunch. Fine. But I need a pop in the club down and dirty bisexual for the girlies song. I mean, I think there's a lot of lesbian pop stardom happening. Do you know Peach PRC? I do. Oh my God. She's incredible. But I'm asking you because you earworm i want this like mask scale out of control it's everywhere the kids the grandmas everyone's and it's just gay as shit lesbian i'm i'm here for it okay i'm just throwing that out there i'm here for it in your next writing uh yeah you know what i I have a couple of titles that i've written down recently that i was like i really want to explore this because that's not really something that i've talked about in my music before Mm -hmm. um but yeah, I'm I'm ready for it. I'm extra ready for it. <laughs> um, I would also like to encourage all of the listeners to go on YouTube, watch um Bonnie McKee's like Christmas specials. Are those <laughs> still up there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like all that shit is great. That's what I'm Thank saying. You. Like you are so primed, <laughs> though you are doing these amazing, like traditional content pieces, a la a music video. You were primed for the interwebs. Thank you. Because you just pump out premium content. You honestly should just be a production studio. I mean, I am. I mean, uh, you are. Me but and, you me know and what Alex, I mean. my, my longtime assistant, Alex, yep. is, is my producer, essentially. And we do all of this shit, just me and her. And it's a lot of work. And she's super organized and very creative. And I mean, yeah, I, I don't bother hiring production companies for my own music videos because I know where they hide the bill like <laughs> I know you get the bill and I'm like I know this ain't right because I've done it myself with my own bare hands yep and so I'm like you know what never mind we know what to do we know who to call we got our team and like it is essentially a production company love the I love your boyfriend the roller was that the roller rink in Glendale yeah yeah Moon, moonlight rollerway mm-hmm. I live right there oh yeah yeah I live in Glendale I now. love that place it's really me too fun. it's really cute mm-hmm. but that was a great video too I was like Ooh, thank you <laughs> very cute um bonnie mckee you are a living legend oh. you are just as talented as you are hot as shit <laughs> the body is bodying <laughs> that is i mean i am strategically never here for the fourth of july but i can't think of anything that would give me more anxiety than putting on a bathing suit at your epic halloween or at your epic halloween or fourth of july party you are the hottest you are benjamin button you are very sweet Thank but i you. will say at all of my pool parties we have all shapes and sizes and I know colors you do. And I've been to a, them it's a very lovely environment yeah it's like me hiding in the corner like drinking a little but also, boy, like you're hot thanks so, I appreciate so. that I wasn't even take your clothes off bitch let's go but also like <laughs> shake the booty the booty <laughs> the booty on the on the roller rink uh, Woo! thank you yeah you can shake a booty I I love buttography what can I say <laughs> <laughs> I love that um <laughs> Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure.